feature match. We have SCG Ringer, Edgar Flores. And that term, I know it gets thrown around, but Edgar is one of the people who, it was kind of yes. like pioneered for people like Edgar where, you know. Yeah, he, he had, earlier this year, he had one of the sickest tears we've seen in a long time. Looks like it may be a mirror. Chris leads with a Seacrum Coast. Yeah, Edgar is playing a blue-white, uh, just a blue-white blade, you know, like his style, his signature style is to that of Callblade, you know. Chris Higashi leading with a Seacrum Coast. Could be like four different decks. Yeah. But uh, given that this is an SCG Open, Callblade is probably, you know, just it being a blade deck is probably the, uh, the most likely. And uh, Edgar's going to go for a Spell Skite. It resolves. And uh, it looks like Chris is Think playing twice. a more controlling deck. Absolutely. A lot more people are playing Think Twice in the Cowboy decks before, but recently they've kind of moved into a much more aggressive, like needing to be tempo-based and needing to spend their mana efficiently. Yeah, I mean, the Mirror and Crusader plan is better than the Think Twice plan in a world of Wolf Run Ramp and decks like that. Although, historically, the Think Twice plan is good against the Mirror and Crusader plan. It's true. Think Twice is a card I feel like people may have overvalued when it was reprinted. It yeah, was I think a, a lot of people... original printing, it, you know... It, it was fine. It was, it was, it was pretty a fun good. card. It's fine much the same way Divination is fine. Yes. Like, it's fine. It is fine. You know? But I think a lot of people were just sort of... They're like, oh, wow, it's been reprinted. It's, uh, you know... Like, it's one of those cards that's like Mystical Teachings or something, but it's not that kind of card. It's yeah. fine. Instant speed, card advantage. Yeah, it's good. It's a good card. In a world where you're allowed to cast Mana Leak, that's... It's, it's like... Something to be, it's like know, shock. to be said for that. You know, like, yeah. shock. It's a fine card. Incinerate, like... It's not breaking any records, but... I don't think it's one. quite an incinerate. It's like a shock. Shock's a See, fair... You, I mean, isn't incinerate not even, like... Shock and incinerate are, like, the same level of quality right now, right? I think, like, right now they are. Yeah, yeah. All I, I mean is, like, right now. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so both players... Not committing anything more to the board. Edgar pondering, setting things up a little bit. He has a spell Skype. Um, Chris has a swamp, though. So the fact that he's got Swamp Plains Island Seacrum Coast, this can mean a lot of things. He can be splashing black in his cowboy deck. He could be playing, most likely, his Solar Flare. Yes. And Solar Flare is still very, very popular. He could be playing a more controlling deck that just, you know, Esper Control. My money is on Solar Flare. Now, uh, how does the uh, Solar Flare Callblade matchup, really, the, the Solar Flare Blue White Blade matchup, really play out? Um, the Ink Moth next I are really good. The, the, they uh, dodge the O Rings in the day. They days dodge the O Rings, the Lilianas, days. all that. And especially if, that Edgar is able to, you know, stick that turn two spell sky. I think he's he's played enough Callblade to know that uh, right now he can uh, he can probably just lean on his opponent with uh, some Ink Moth next I and. Uh, do some damage. The fact that Chris has played Think Twice, it makes me think he's actually playing like an Esper control deck, you know? Like one of those decks that's we've seen recently that's basically a blue-white control deck that splashes like Doom Blades, you know? Or it's a, it's a blue-black deck that splashes Day of Judgment, you know? So Edgar's gonna go ahead and Snapcaster Mage this Ponder here. Just inches. Very, very patient. This is when Edgar Flores is in his element. Just looking to get a tiny little edge, tiny little edge, tiny little edge against other blue decks. Interesting. Yeah. To resolve, I mean, even if he, uh, if he does go ahead and uh, pay for that mana leak, then... Like, what ends up happening is that he's not even able to flash back the Ponder off the Snapcaster. Right, so he just has a 2-1. He's just getting a 2-1 out of it. But it, is the one poison counter worth more than the 2-1? There's that Consecrated Sphinx. This is so tough for a blue-white deck. Yeah. Because really what ends up happening is you just let him draw two cards, and then you hopefully have a day or something. Well, Edgar's going to go ahead and dismember this, and then Snapcaster dismember again during his upkeep, I think. Oh, you know, he has another Snapcaster. Yes. Wow. So there's eight life. Yeah, that's definitely a good way to do it. Yeah, I mean, 
I mean, you don't need the eight life against the solar flare player or Esper control. I guess he's looking more and more like the Esper control we talked about. It's just, you know, a blue control deck splashing black and white for the the spot removal and the sweepers. I'm thinking Chris is just going to drop another Sphinx though. That would be bad for Edgar. Yeah. People like this, they always play like three or four Sphinx. Yeah. I play four Sphinx. I mean, the Sphinx is just. It's the Sphinx just it's such a good two, like it's the such a good six for these these decks that have all the good spells. So, O ring, but as we saw, Mole Drifter ability taking yep. effect. So I mean, brutal too. Is it Chris so O rings the O ring? But Edgar's Edgar's doing all right. He's got him. You know, he's hit him a fair bit with the Nexus. Mm -hmm. He's got another guy down. If he can drop a sword, you know, like obviously that'll turn the tide real fast. But uh, the main thing we're going to be seeing is whether or not uh, whether or not Chris is able to continue dropping sixes and seven, you know, sixes or even like a Karn or a Worm Coil. The Worm Coil wouldn't be exceptional here. I think the Eggers yeah, going to win that race. See, it's it's pretty much just consecrated Sphinx, right? Yeah. Or like O-ring to get back the Sphinx. Yeah. And, and there's exactly what he has. Yeah. So the first O-ring takes out the spell skite. Do we see a third O-ring? We do. <laughs> it's amazing the things you can do when you draw two extra cards. Yeah. Now, Edgar, during his upkeep, is uh, going to go ahead and disperse this Consecrated Sphinx. Oh, yeah. If he has Disperse, that's, that's hot right here. Yeah. How common is Disperse these days? It's like a one of... I, I think it's pretty common. It just adds a different dimension. You know, like once in a while you get out from underneath a, a shrine, or you surprise have an instant speed weight interact, or you just bounce your Snapcaster Mage, like in a pinch. The bouncing Snapcaster Mage is pretty nice. Edgar was saying that uh, one of the things he really likes to do is uh, block with Snapcaster and then bounce it with a Disperse. Ooh. Get a little extra value. Especially when next turn you can go Snapcaster and then choose to Disperse, block again, Disperse your Snapcaster again, and then just Snapcaster mm -hmm. whatever you really want after buying yourself several extra turns. And was that just a stave off? There's no way. He would have staved off the Consecrated Sphinx. From uh, Edgar. Oh, wow. Say the Ink Moth. I believe Chris is actually at five in fact now, if I'm counting correctly. Yeah, I think, I think we actually accidentally went down. Should be five. So, the Sphinx is back. Let's see. Edgar and, uh, is running out of ways to pro postpone this. It does look like he has another O-ring there. Sadly, Chris will get another two cards from the Mold Drifter aspect yep. of the Sphinx, but... Edgar. But, uh... Saying, I, I decline to draw. Snapcasting the Disperse. Yeah. He's trying to hold it off as long as he can. Yeah. Ah. Uh, well... Well, that's not good. That's, that's it. That's... Not good. The Snapcaster Mage can't attack, can it? It's got summoning sickness. Uh, one of them Whoa. can't attack. One of them can't attack. Yeah. Yeah, so... Hopefully stopping the match ASAP. It's probably not going to matter. I mean, it's too, it's just too damage in a situation, but still point, you know, important to maintain the integrity of the board state here. Fortunately, our spotter on the floor, Sheriff Wesco, making sure yeah. to uh, keep everything official. So, Chris has drawn four extra cards from the Sphinx at this point. An O-Ring is going to try to stop it, but it, once the Sphinx starts drawing cards, so often it just spirals out of control. Yeah, I mean, at that, that point, the Is this player, a dissipate? Yeah, This is a dissipate, like that's brutal. That's what it is. Alright, so 
I mean, obviously, Edgar can just hope that Chris is drawing three blanks a turn. But it's pretty rough. Um, it is weird that Chris was attacking with his Consecrated Sphinx. Yes. That is really peculiar to me because... And maybe he's just committed and not blocking because of Dismember. But... And Edgar's at eight, right? Yes, Edgar's at eight. Edgar's at eight from two Dismembers and a Consecrated Sphinx. So, at this point, Chris needs to just not die. I mean, maybe... I guess it really depends on what his eight, you know, what the, you know, the eight cards he's drawn in the last two and a half turns have been. Yes. But um, I mean, the fact that he's being so aggressive and continuing to swing. And uh, now Chris even has like Ghost Quarter, things like that to deal with the Ink Moth. It's just. So now Edgar drops to four. <sighs> oh, ring on a Snapcaster Mage. I guess just to do something, you know, yeah. prevent some damage. I mean, you, you never know, maybe his hand is just so full that he would have just had to discard after that. Yeah, um, plus... Just I mean, redundant. Like, Sword of War and Peace, you don't want to kill you in one hit. Maybe he did the myth. Swinging anyway. Consecrated Sphinx is threatening lethal here, so he's... He needs to have something. He has the ink moths. But he doesn't. He's facing a ghost quarter. And he kept well, one. He has, attacked with one Nexus. Right? He has two more Nexus in play. He, he had two, and now oh, he just played a third. Sure, sure. So. So. After Chris draws his card for the turn, he will have drawn ten cards in the last three and a half turns. And that's it. Yeah. A Doom Blade prevents even the chump block, and we go to game two. And, uh, Chris Higashi up a game here with his Esper Control List. It uh, it actually did not look like Solar Flare. Not at all. Yeah. No. He was uh, he was not using his uh, reanimate spells. He was instead uh, going yeah, ahead and uh, sphinxing his opponent. <laughs> Absolutely. Just like all of the, the recently, we've been seeing an, uh, a surge of these. These blue decks that are, you know, card draw, counter spells, consecrated sphinx, and then supported with like Day of Judgment, O Ring, Doom Blade, and Flashback on the Alchemy. So we're about to see the deck list here. So first, Edgar Flores. He's playing both Blade Splicers and Crusaders. Ooh. Which is interesting. One main deck stave off. Multiple disperses. A main deck negate. No stranger to the spice, Edgar Flores. And he's always got some spiciness. And he's looking at, he's got sideboard, uh, I guess, is he going to bring in Revoke Existence? I mean, like it hits O-rings, but is that enough? Because I mean, he doesn't know if his opponent has Worm Coil or not. He doesn't want to be too reactive, yeah. but none of the rest of his sideboard does anything. So yeah. if he has any bad cards game one, like for instance, I mean, is Dismember actually good? I guess it's not the worst, but it's really hard to dismember a Consecrated Sphinx to death. Yeah, you have to do a lot of work. His build looks really weak to Consecrated Sphinx anyway. Right? Yeah. Like he just doesn't really have... I mean, he doesn't have any Day of Judgments anywhere, right? No. So his only answers to Consecrated Sphinx are... Kill them. Double dismember them, or disperse, or O-ring. I guess the main thing is just that putting a fast clock on them, right? With a mana leak, yeah. Definitely looks a little tough. So, Chris Higashi is actually playing Solar Flare. He's, oh, uh, he is? Okay. He's got Liliana, Unburial Rites. Uh, he only has one Sun Titan. That's interesting. Which I like. I, I, I think Sun Titan's okay, but you can't, you can't uh, bank on Sun Titan right now. I think that Consecrated Sphinx is by far the best six. But you want to have at least one six of a different name because of that graveyard, you know, because of Memoricide or Surgical Extraction. Some people would play uh, Warm Coil, but the fact that he has Liliana of the Veil 
and O-Ring, which could go to the yard from Forbidden Alchemy. It makes it a little bit more appealing to play the, uh, the Sun Titan. The Sun Titan. He's playing a lot of counter magic, which makes those Think Twice is a little bit better, you know? And Think Twice is still fine. I mean, you need to draw some extra cards, but he does have a very controlled build, a very streamlined, you know, O-Rings and Doom Blades and Days, trying to hit creatures. Leaks and dissipates to, to protect, and then think twice as an alchemies with snapcasters to give him more of whatever he needs. What I'm interested in is his mana base. Yeah, so he has uh, his 12 um, black sources, right? Then he has 14 white sources. Then he has uh, on 17 blue. 17 blue. So, so he's this is an honest mana base. Yes, this is a real mana base. He's got and because the he has real 17 deal. blue. You know he can play his Dissipate early, and he can actually cycle his Think Twice on turn two, which helps him. Like, the only area he's a little shy on is black for Liliana. Like, sometimes it's a little tough for him to play Liliana on turn three, but it's not but even Liliana that big of a deal. Liliana doesn't need to be doesn't played, need on, to turn be played on three. You can play it on turn five with Manalee. And 12 isn't few. I mean, a 17, yep. you said 17, 14, 12? Yes. That's a, I mean, it's not super exciting, but he still found room, despite having multiple Ghost Quarters in his deck, to fit enough to play, you know, mm -hmm. definitely like that. I mean, that's always one of Esper's weaknesses anyway, you know, in the new format is a little mana rocky base. of mana bases. And he's playing 27 lands, which I also like. I love that. That's, yes. Why is, it, why is it so important to play so many lands, you know, because before the Esper deck we saw only at 25. So the thing is, especially when you're playing these Solar Flare variants, if you miss a land drop um, before turn 7, it hurts really bad. And in order to not miss land drops for that long, you really need a lot of land. Like you don't have Preordain to smooth it out early. Mm -hmm. And even with Preordain, you wanted 26. <laughs> Somet I, often 27. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so Edgar starting it off with, is that a Spell Skite? It's hard to tell. It looks like it's Carlos, though. It could be. It's hard to see. You know, it's a Ratchet Bomb. Okay. So, and Chris has Island Swamp. A little bit uh, tricky because he's not playing any Scars lands in the first couple turns, which suggests that his mana is not necessarily all the way developed. Blade Splicer. Chris tanking, but we all know darn well if he had a mana wake, he would use it. Yeah. <laughs> it's interesting that Edgar brings in the Ratchet Bomb. Now, obviously, he didn't really have any good cards to bring. Like, he doesn't have a lot of great cards, so at least Ratchet Bomb early can tick up high enough and be a seal of Consecrated Sphinx if you play it on two. Or it can threaten to get rid of O-Rings in weird corner cases. But for the most part, it's aiming to just be a seal of, you know, Consecrated Sphinx. Which I don't hate. No. And he doesn't know that Chris isn't going to be, you know, playing uh, Phantom, you know, Phantasmal Image with Sun Titan and just chaining out, you know. So, Forbidden Alchemy. Such a great card for... Uh, for decks with flashback. Oh yeah, it's just such a powerful spell in general. That was definitely one of the cards I was most excited about when I read the Innistrad spoiler. Much to AJ Soccer's chagrin, Forbidden Alchemy has actually turned out to be a mystical teachings like engine where people aren't just using it as a two for one. They are, you know, building around it a little bit to take advantage of the, the graveyard part. AJ actually is the most recent player to top eight with Solar Flare, right? Like, was it? Didn't he top eight last week with Solar Flare? Um, or the last, or two weeks ago? Or I think two weeks ago. Two yes. weeks ago? Yeah. Edgar continuing to apply the beats. Does not commit another creature to the board. Why bother, right? Like, you just, you put down one good threat, and then you can kind of protect it, and you don't overextend into a day of judgment. I guess something it's nice the, about Blade Splicer is, you know, it's, it's four points. It is. That's a lot. <laughs> and Void Splicer is, I mean, like he matches up well against all the removal. I mean, nobody plays Slagstorm anymore, so. So, Chris at this point, just building up his mana supply, still doesn't have double black. But, uh,. Not clear how much that matters, although I'm anticipating that because Chris hasn't really cast a lot of spells besides alchemy, that he's looking at a Sphinx very soon. 
He Doom Blades the token. Edgar now having six land, a Ratchet Bomb, and a 1-1 uh, a one -one from, you know, Blade Splicer guy. Facing down Chris's five mana, full grip, successful alchemy. So yeah, will Edgar try to resolve, like, maybe a sword here? or He needs to commit something to the board. Yeah, he needs, he needs something. He puts the Crusader. He decides to okay. the Crusader. Maybe he's thinking that if Chris drops the uh, the Consecrated Sphinx next turn, uh, it gets dissipated. But yeah, yeah I mean, here he just has to pass. Right? I don't know. Because like if he doesn't have the Counterspell, maybe he figures Chris is just going to do it anyway. You just commit your thing to the board. and Because if he doesn't play it now, he's not going to be able to equip and activate cast O-Ring next turn. So I don't know, he's got to also decide, is Chris the type of guy who could potentially not, who could just, you know, not play the Sphinx on Sphinx? Personally, the way, like, I, think, I, don't, I don't think Chris could get away from a Sphinx. Yeah, see, he plays the sword. I don't think Chris could get away from playing the Sphinx next turn, even if, you know, like, you have to, like, even if he has the leak, you're not going to wait three more turns. You just start doing it, you know? So he plays the, the sword so that uh, in the event that he is facing the Sphinx next turn, he'll at least be able to equip his Blade Splicer and still O-Ring it if he has the O-Ring. What's not clear is if Chris even has a sixth land. Yeah, and sometimes you just wish you had 28. <laughs> you know? It's really hard to put Chris on... Uh, going into the tank and coming out with Consecrated Sphinx. Oh, so yeah. I'm gonna, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that that's uh, what's going to end up happening here. Snapcaster Mage. Are we going to see Snapcaster on the Alchemy to look for a land? And we're going to see Snapcaster on the Doomblade. On the right? Doomblade. Yeah. yeah, you just got to hold this sword off, right? At least you're doing something. It's not super exciting, but it's something. It's just tough because Edgar's Ratchet Bomb is ticking, ever, you know, ever closer to uh, that six, so that he can have that protection from the Sphinx. And that's that a Sun Titan. Wow. Sun Titan returns to play its place. Sun sir. Titan, brutal. Chris is really going to need a day, but he needs a sixth land too. That missing a beat, just like you talked about. Yep. If Solar Flare misses a land before seven, it's. It's brutal. Really bad. And that's exactly what happened. He missed it on turn six. He missed it on six. He missed the sixth land drop. Yeah. That's rough. And I mean, his hand was definitely a keeper. I mean, you kind of have to uh, rely on the top of your deck a little bit. You have to trust. Oh, Edgar has two Sun Titans. Didn't yes. see that because of the exotic spelling of the word Sun Titan. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, the two Sun Titans in the board are really putting in some work. Edgar Flores, uh, excellent blue-white aggro control player. Um, not the best uh, calligraph <laughs> yeah. calligraphy artist. Is it possible that Edgar Flores actually has the most Planeswalker points because of Callblade, or because of Sword of Feast and Famine, than anybody else? Uh, I, think, I don't even think that's a, like, you know, like, like because twice. of Sword of Feast and Famine, Edgar Flores has used Sword of Feast and Famine to earn more Planeswalker points than anyone else, I believe. You know, right now he's in the top ten in the world in Planeswalker points. For this year? For this year. I believe it. It's ben Stark crazy. has probably earned a lot of Planeswalker points from, from uh, Sword of Feast and Famine, though, with that 18x multiplier. Oh, that's true. They didn't even record it yet. On the, on the scorings thing, it doesn't even show up yet. But he really does have 18x as his multiplier for Paris, even though they haven't adjusted them yet. You know. So, Sword of Feast and Famine equipped. Chris on the Chump. Hope Edgar doesn't have counter magic. So we have a uh, Snapcaster Mage coming down. We're gonna most likely see this flashback on what the Forbidden Alchemy. Um, Digging to that. Uh, yeah, that I think that's judgment. the only option. Yeah, and then double chump. Let's find a day. It's interesting that he chooses to alchemy now. A lot of people forget you don't have to cast the spell immediately from Snapcaster. You can just wait till their end step. Yeah. Then he gets to leave open counter magic and things like that. Yeah.
another strong interaction in uh, Chris's deck is Forbidden Alchemy with Think Twice. Oh, yeah. You, you just know, get extra just, cards sometimes. You should sometimes get a freebie. Edgar moves the sword over. Why not? Chris untaps. So now he's got to get a like he's got a day here, right? Like yes. But the problem is that if Edgar leaks, he can't even leak to protect it. Think twice, continuing to look for that day, which it is painfully clear he does not yet have. Yeah. And he's probably just gonna pack it in here. I mean, he's not dead immediately, right? Like he can. I mean, like, cause, like if he just so O-rings the, the next, next if he, is he dead the next? What's the creature yeah. that the sword? Yeah, because so it's just, not a Sun Titan. Yeah, because if he O-rings, at least he holds. Oh, it. yeah. Okay, you're right. I didn't know he had the O-ring. Now it's obviously not where you want to be, facing down a blade splicer, a sword of feast and famine, an ink moth nexus, plenty of mana, and several cards in hand. Snapcaster Snap mage just down. This is another yeah. body. Put the pressure on, and that's the clock. That's lethal. Because now he puts the sword on the one one, one and he has a three three, three to two one to get through. Mm -hmm. Edgar Flores, Callblade Extraordinaire, ties it up. <laughs> is it one to one? And Chris is going to get to be on the play again. And I'm interested to see how uh, how Edgar's going to sideboard for uh, this last game. I think Revoke Existence is probably going to come in. Out of Edgar? Out of Edgar. Maybe not, though. We could ask him at uh, some point whether or not he sided in the uh, Revokes. Yep. We know he sided in the Sun Titans. I know the Retrobomb looks good to me. Yeah, and... Like, it, it was fine. It wasn't amazing, but he's got some bad cards, so you got to play something. Yeah. And, like, and, I mean, he, he did what he was supposed to with it. He got it to six. Yeah, and I mean, obviously Chris stumbled, but, I mean, Chris would have drawn two extra cards from the Sphinx before it could have got bombed if he hadn't stumbled. How many land is Edgar fight? I mean, obviously he's only two colors, so he doesn't have as tough of requirements, but... Um, 26? 26. He's still, still playing 26. That's discipline. Yeah. He's two colors. It's two colors. He, uh, in his main deck, his curve stops at five, and he's only playing two five drops, and he's playing 26 lines. It's good. I like it, that. Yeah, and he's got land that do things. Four nexuses and a more land haunt to help make sure there's always somebody to carry one of his three swords. I think uh, that that's something Edgar does very well, is he plays enough land. <laughs> He, uh, Edgar is a very new Magic player. I don't know if you know how new he is to the game, but he has mm -hmm. been playing for maybe two years. Yeah, just barely. Yeah. Um, he was uh, he was a Yu-Gi-Oh player, and when they stopped having those Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments, he uh, started playing some Magic cards. Wait, that's really weird. So you're saying that if there isn't support for high-level competitive tournament play in a game, the that great minds stop playing it? and move on to different games. That's really weird. <laughs> There's a life lesson to be learned there. I would really, 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 you know, think about that, because that's that's really interesting. I mean, I know that this game is really lucky to have a guy like Edgar Flores, yeah. and that Yu-Gi-Oh! is much worse off without him. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I'm sure the people doing Yu-Gi-Oh! aren't just trying to, you know, exploit the Yu-Gi-Oh! players in the short run, and they want the Yu-Gi-Oh! to be continuing to do well for many years, so and they must have, have a strategy. Yeah. yeah, there must be a strategy behind why they would do this, because... Um, so, uh, do we have any uh, answer, uh, any, I guess, feedback from the people on Twitter? Any, uh... I'm going to take a look at... Alright, so, uh, yeah, something interesting about Edgar. I first met Edgar because... He and I were both on a bus up to Canada to play in a Grand Prix, and I had never met him before. And he was very new to Magic at the time. And, like, it was a limited Grand Prix, 
he was talking about cards and he did not sound like he knew what he was talking about at all and I was it's like who is this guy I, he's why is he taking an 11 hour bus ride up to Canada he's because he was clearly very unprepared for the event yeah um, we go to Canada and that night we drafted and practiced sealed with a bunch of people who were staying in the same hotel people from like New York City area and he was there and from the beginning of us starting playing to the end of us starting playing, Edgar Flores went through a transformation where all of a sudden he was very good at playing. And the next day, he played in the Grand Prix. I'm not sure if that was his first Grand Prix or second Grand Prix. And he day two. He's a Pretty very impressive. quick learner. With no buys. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Just grind it up from the bottom. So, Chris, leading off with Seacrum Coast Isolated Chapel, which is actually a really good way to be for him because it... Uh, it, it, Wrath that's of God so much Mana. of his colors, you know? Yeah. He's the only now, thing he's off of is Liliana. Just yeah, he's a swamp right away from everything. Yeah. That's Assuming he goes straight up to six like he's supposed to. Oh, yeah. Blade Splicer. Yeah. Oh, it actually sticks. That's definitely annoying for, uh, you know, because like, if you can counter the first threat that comes down and just stay a little bit ahead of the game. Yeah, then he's in excellent shape. Dark Slick Shores, there's that uh, perfect mana now. You know, he, he can cast whatever he wants to at this point. So now, Edgar is definitely ahead. Like, the fact that Edgar was able to stick a, a substantial threat, mm -hmm. Edgar doesn't have all the permission in the world to protect it, but if he draws a leak, it makes his snap casters into Mystic Snakes. And I mean, the burden is on Chris to do something now. It's definitely, you know, Chris's move to try to, try to, you know, force some action. Yeah. The tough thing is if he tries to make the wrong move and ends up getting tapped out, because if Edgar ever sticks a sword, you know, like unchecked, that's how it just spirals out. Liliana, not the best versus Blade Splicer. Yes. Not um, at all. I think if I'm Edgar, I just let it resolve, even if I have the counter spell. And especially, I mean, like, he doesn't have the mana to Doomblade a guy also, you know, to make things awkward. Because if Edgar had to attack with just the Golem and Chris Doombladed in combat, that taps some of mana, Edgar's mana on his own turn to protect it, if he, can, if he even can. As it stands, most likely what we're going to see is uh, Liliana killing a 1-1 and preventing 3 damage. But you gotta do something. I mean, he might even have another Lily on his hand. I mean, besides it's little battles, maybe he thought maybe he's playing Edgar for a sucker. Maybe he thought maybe Edgar will fight over this. It's Liliana. It's a you know 50, 60, you know. It's a powerful spell. Yeah. Edgar knows better. <laughs> and uh, Edgar doesn't even have to deal three to Liliana. He just gets to kill it with a spirit token. It's the uh, Moorland haunt. Got activated by the blade splice. They're getting hitting the bin. That's not the most progress I've seen. Like Liliana yeah. didn't didn't really do a ton. anything. Yeah. It dealt one damage and prevented. No, I guess it prevented one damage. Yes. And it sort of was a purify the grave. Like it removed one card out of the graveyard. Yeah, it gave him one less future activation. Future activation. Now there's the day of judgment. And Edgar's got a negate, which is, which turns all which turns the Snapcaster Mage way on. Yes. And if there's one thing that we all like to do, it is turn on Tiago Chan. So let's see. Uh, Mana leak to protect. Edgar allows it. And step Snapcaster for the beats. Does this mean a sword is about to come down? That's what I would expect. Oh, you he doesn't have the land. land. Yeah. Brutal. Well, there's the sword. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we we knew what he was setting up for. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta like, fight for it. Oh, wow. There's Sun Titan. Making that Liliana play much, much better. He needed yeah. to get the Liliana into his graveyard, so there's nothing wrong with that. This is... Suddenly, bad very things. bad for Edgar. This is very bad. 
Um, I don't. I don't think Edgar really has the tool. Like it's called. Like the bl blade decks are often the kind of deck that needs to stay ahead the whole time. Like they're very good, but they're not good at catching up a lot of the time. And the thing is, is nothing's really good at catching up with Solar Flare once it. Yeah, because I mean, when you're sun type, you're doing the most powerful sun... things that you can do. The Solar Flare is very powerful when it comes together. And as we saw, Chris drew the right mix of land. And he didn't miss a land drop. Um, it was good that he played the Liliana when he did. You know, we laughed at the time, but he needed to get into his yard to set up this exact play. He's very fortunate that Edgar missed a land drop, but um, what is Edgar going to do to get out of this now? It's like Sun Titan. He doesn't really have answers to Sun Titan beyond O Ring, right? No. He, um, it is vigilant, so even Gideon doesn't even. Uh, Yeah. Um, dispersing a Sun Titan is a losing proposition. It is. Um, obviously, he blew his Snapcaster. Yeah, I, I don't... But Edgar, you know, Edgar is not the type of guy to get shook just because he's in a 99.5% chance to lose type of position. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's still like going to play for his win. I think he's, you know, he's just like, okay, we're just going to have to figure out what is that play? What is the, uh, what is the line that can actually get out of this? We see O ring, probably in the Sun Titan. Mm -hmm. I imagine this actually might shake some players, some solar flare players in this position. Well, not if they have a soul, an O ring of their own, but just because no. of you know Edgar going into the tank and coming out with O ring gear, Sun Titan. Because by the, if he goes into the tank, you're thinking, okay, I got him. I'm, but uh, O ring on the Sun Titan. Real hard with Liliana in play. Real hard to beat. Yeah. And it's, you can't really justify bringing in purges because, like, a lot of these people only have two Lilianas. All right. Hager Flores, five land, and a sort of feast and famine. Facing down incredible odds, Chris Agashi has Liliana of the Veil vale and Sun Titan. Plenty of mana. All of his colors, cards in hand. I've seen Edgar come back from worse. Not much. Wow. The worst card in Chris's hand was Snapcast from Rage. That does not bode well for Edgar. Now, now to be fair, when the Sun Titan attacks, now it has something to get back. Oh yeah, Synergy, baby. And a Mana Leak because Chris doesn't want Edgar to, even for a moment, have a shred of hope. Edgar trying at the, uh, the end step to, to uh, disperse, right? Trying to bounce that Sun Titan. So Edgar just passes. Chris's turn again. Just gonna see more ticking up with Liliana. Sun Titan getting in there, getting back a Snapcaster Mage. Yeah, now, uh... We give these Solar Flare decks a hard time sometimes, but... They do come together, and they come together nicely. Oh, yeah. When you... When you hit those land drops right, and you draw the right mix, you're very hard to beat. And he's playing 27 land, so he's doing his part. No, I, I'm not saying it's... Uh... It's interesting, he's playing a build that just can't beat an Inkmoth Nexus. I mean, he's got three Doom Blades, but I mean, like, his matchup against Wolf Run, he's just O-Rings and Day of Judgments and Think Twices and Counter Spells. It's like... Um, I mean, Solar Fire's always had a tough time against Wolf Run, but in recent times we've seen so much green-white and so much infect that maybe maybe this is just a sweet metagame call, too, where uh, there isn't that much Wolf Run this weekend. Yeah, I mean, I, I haven't looked around as much as I'd like to, but that's definitely a possibility. Now, uh, Chris goes ahead and uh, think, cast Think Twice. Just continue. Why not? You know, just keep building his advantage. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't know for sure that Edgar doesn't have days, although we do. Yes. 
Now, uh, Edgar is going to get to equip this sword. So he's got something going on. This is a yeah. thing. He's going to is... attack this Liliana. Well, uh, well, only if you can stop the Sun Titan. Yeah. Makes a token. I mean, he's he's grinding. This is he's he's definitely uh, he's planeswalker pointing, Chris, every bit he can. I mean, he's got Chris down to eight now. Untapping all of his lands. This, you know, he's played this really well. So. So technically, he beats the board if he can stop that Snapcaster. No, he doesn't even have to. He technically he. No, the Liliana. He's making progress. He's yeah. Chris, at, Chris is at eight life. I agree. Which is against a sword and multiple flyers. I mean, besides, part of it is also it's not just you know hoping that Chris is nothing. He can also Chris can miss play in some way. So he's got to give himself chances. I mean, this is a complicated matchup. Um, what wow, is, I thought this was over. I was uh, I was ready to lock it up. 99.5 is not 100. Sure. Still, probably 99.5. But interesting enough, because Chris ticked that Liliana up to three, he's unable to use the Liliana to make twice to edict and then yeah. edict again. Yeah. Or not edict. Yeah, edict and then edict again. Sadly, he has another O ring. Because of Liliana, he was able to discard and get into play without having to pay any mana. So Edgar no longer has the sword, which means. So Edgar has. Well, he has to block with the token because it's, you know. So. Edgar's pretty far away from being able to race. But. He's got a token. <laughs> So a sword is something, an over, he needs, like, I mean, obviously stopping Sun Titan would be great. A dismember would be good. You know, block, then dismember the Sun Titan. Um, he's got his own Sun Titan, but he doesn't have six lands still. So brutal that he doesn't have the six land. He's got his own Sun Titan in his hand. Draws out the Dissipate. Well, I believe that's a revoke existence, so... He wanted that to resolve. Oh, yeah. The revoke existence would have been real nice. Revoke the Oblivion Ring on the, to get an Oblivion Ring. Okay. Edgar, deciding what to do with this token. Liliana is at two right now, right? Or is it at one? Uh, I believe it's at one. One is an interesting thing. You don't attack it so that he doesn't get the extra hit from Liliana, you know? Because if you attack it and kill it, then he'll be able to eat it too. At one, he can't do anything. All he can do is make a discard. Edgar's a champ. I mean, he is way, way behind. But he's playing really tight for a guy who's in a nearly hopeless position. Yeah, he's playing really, really tight. Mostly dead. Is still very much partly alive. Yes. So, Sun Titan bringing back Snapcaster Mage. Problem being that this once again puts Hager on a one turn clock. Let's see. Uh. <laughs> so, Edgar's another dead. Snapcaster Mage comes down, dissipates, Edgar packs. Chris Higashi has won two to one. Wait, wait, wait. 
Yeah, that was game three, right? Yeah, it was game yeah. three. Higashi I mean, that was a one. very impressive game. Right, yeah, guess. by both players. I mean, both players played very yeah. strong. Chris could have made a couple. Really well if, if Chris would have made a couple mistakes, Edgar was putting himself in a position to capitalize on it. But uh, Chris played very tight. That was a good match. Absolutely. Happy we got to watch that. So, uh, looks like we're going to go on a uh, we're going to go on a break, and then uh, when we come back, we're going to try to uh, to get to responses, test the waters of what our of what the fo- of what the uh, people following along at home are predicting. The will dominate the top eight or show up in the top eight anyway. 